Today we are going to be looking at yet another open source LLM that was just released. But this one is very special, both in terms of its performance compared to other LLMs, as well as it, a very interesting license. Hugging Face has a leaderboard for open LLMs, where they compared the performance of open LLMs on four different benchmark datasets. So far, uh, Llama-based models were on top of the leaderboard, but now they have been taken over by this model called Falcon 40B. This is a new model which is able to beat the rest of all open source models uh, by a large amount. And in fact, uh, in three out of the four uh, benchmark datasets, it's able to beat uh, the Llama-based models. Now, in this video, we are going to look at it, how this is trained, what's so special about this model, and also, I will show you how you can run this inside Google Colab. This model was released by Technology Innovation Institute from United Arab Emirates, which is one of um, a new player on the scene when it comes to LLMs. Uh, let's look at some of the details. So Falcon is a foundational large language model with 40 billion parameters trained on 1 trillion tokens. Now, they have another version, which is smaller, uh, which has 7 billion parameters, and I believe it's trained on 1.5 trillion tokens. One of the things that are uh, they, they are highlighting is that this model uh, uses a lot less computation uh, compared to the existing models. So, for example, and they're saying that it uses only 75% of GPT-3's training compute, 45% uh, of Chanchena, and 80% of Palm 62 billion parameter model. So there are a few things which makes this model very unique. The first one is custom tooling. So they are not utilizing tools from NVIDIA, Microsoft, or Hugging Face. Rather, they have developed their own data pipeline as well as a co custom code base uh, to train these models. Now, a second contribution or uniqueness is uh, the quality of data that was used for training these models. We will look at the training set in a little bit. It's unique in the sense that it's multilingual as compared to uh, most of the other open source models. They also made some optimization to the compute resources needed. And it's one of their selling point. So they're saying that the training time has been reduced substantially and as well as the inference time. So for example, compared to GPT-3, it takes only one-fifth of the compute at inference time. Uh, these are significant improvements and opens up a lot of possibilities to run these uh, large language models on relatively cheaper hardware. Now, we will look at the training data before looking at one of the most controversial part, uh, which is the license. There are two variants, the 40 billion parameter variant was trained with 1 trillion tokens and the data set that they are using is called refined web. So this refined web data set is essentially you know, a web crawl of all the internet where the data is filtered and in some cases it's deduplicated. Now in terms of the uh, distribution of the data, around 75% is coming from English. Uh, so that's the websites that were crawled, right? Uh, seven person, which is around seven billion uh, tokens, it's coming from European languages. And then the rest is coming from books, conversations, codes, and technical. Now, in terms of European languages, uh, that it, uh, 70 billion tokens consist of 26% German, and then 24% Spanish, and 23% French. And the rest of the languages have a minimal contribution. So I would suspect that this model will work pretty good for English, German, Spanish, and French. Uh, on the rest of the languages, the performance may not be that great. Now, in terms of training, so they used uh, 384 A100 GPUs and trained this model for about two months. Now, this shows you what type of resources you need if you want to train a foundation model. Now, they do have a smaller model, which is a 7 billion parameter model. Now, this specific model is trained on 1.5 billion a trillion tokens. Uh, so this is much bigger data set compared to the one that they're using for 40 billion parameter model. 
And I think it comes down to time as well as resources uh, that you need to train a bigger model with a bigger data set. Now, l let's look at uh, a controversial aspect of this, which is the license. So it has an open um, source license, Apache 2.0, uh, but with some restrictions. So it's not as restrictive as Llama, but it has its own limitation. So it says you can freely use our models for research and personal purposes. And you are allowed to share build derivatives of these models, but you are required to give attribution uh, and to share like the same license. Now, the last part of the license is the one uh, that is the most interesting. So it says for commercial use, you are exempt from royalties payment if the attributable revenue are inferior to $1 million per year. Otherwise, you should enter in a commercial agreement with the Technical Innovation Institute. Uh, so that means that you can use this model uh, for commercial purposes without any royalty payments as long as your revenue is under $1 million per year. Now, if you go beyond that, you will need to have a commercial agreement with them. Now, let me show you how you can use this in your own workflow. It's a completely new architecture. Therefore, tools like Ubabuga Text Generation Web UI does not support this yet. However, uh, you can use this with the Transformer package from Hugging Face. So to show you how to use it, I'm going to walk you through a Google uh, Colab notebook that I put together. Now, we cannot run the 40 billion uh, version on Google Colab. And that's why we're going to be looking at the 7 billion parameter version. Now, this one is a simple uh, pre-trained model, which should be further fine-tuned for most user, uh, use cases. So we're going to be specifically looking at the instruct fine-tune version. Now, in order to run the instruct uh, fine-tune version, uh, we're going to be utilizing the code that they have provided. I had to make a couple of adjustments and just install the required packages. So let me show you how you can run the instruct fine-tune version for the 7 billion parameter model. Now, you can run this code locally and it should work. So first, we are simply um, installing a few packages. So we are mainly using transformer package and then accelerate Xformer and Enops. Now, these packages are needed in order to run the model. The rest of the code is um, basically inspired from the code that they have provided in their example. So uh, we are first importing uh, auto tokenizer for uh, tokenization process of the sentences or data that we are going to be providing and then auto model for causal LM. Now the uh, model ID is basically uh, selected from here, or actually in this case, it's selected from here. So you just need to copy that uh, model ID, uh, pass it on uh, to auto tokenizer from pre trained model. So it will download the corresponding tokenizer. So the for each model, you need to have a specific tokenizer for it to work. Now, if you are familiar with the transform package, the rest is just basically setting up um, the pipeline. Now, in this case, we're going to be using the text generation type of models because it's a simple decoder only model. So it's not a combination of uh, encoder decoder. Then we pass on the model ID that we selected. Now the corresponding tokenizer. In this case, we are using uh, float 16. So that's uh, simply a floating part precision that we want to use. And then if you have multiple um, you know, GPUs, so you can just set it to auto. In this specific case, I'm using T4 uh, GPU from Google Colab. It has a 15 gigabytes of RAM. Next, I just want to show you how you can actually run this. So in order to run this, you need to use the pipeline that we just created, and then you will pass on um, your prompt. So in this case, my prompt is draft an apology email to a customer who experienced a delay in their order and provide reassurances that the issue has been resolved, right? Then you define um, the maximum length of the output that you want and just uh, set some other uh, parameters uh, for the pipeline. And here's the output. It's actually uh, not bad at all. It's pretty good. Keep in mind that we are not using the best model in this case because the, the model uh, that's on the uh, leaderboard, that is the 40 billion parameter model. 
Whereas the model that we are using is this 7 billion parameter model, which is uh, pretty down below on the leaderboard. But still, it is able to uh, generate pretty comprehensive responses. So, for example, it says, we sincerely apologize for the inconveniences and delay in the uh, delivery of your order. And then it kind of explains that uh, our tiny team works tirelessly to ensure uh, that all orders are dispatched as soon as possible, but sometimes unforeseen circumstances arises although it doesn't mention what um, those circumstances were, right? And then it simply tries to reassure that uh, actions have been taken to address the issues. So uh, not bad at all for a very small model, and you would expect a lot from the much bigger model. Here is just another prompt that I used to create a list of three startup ideas in enterprise and B2B spaces, and it came up with i think a good list but uh, definitely you could do better now the goal of this section was just to show you how you can run these models so if you have the resources and you want to run the 40 billion parameter model you simply need to replace uh, this model id um, at the end of the video i just wanted to put a couple of comments on the leaderboard it's great to have uh, some kind of quantitative and qualitative measures of the performance of these models such as benchmarks However, um, I won't uh, put too much weightage on these. And the reason is that these um, benchmark data sets, they are way different than what you would use these models in real life. So what I'm trying to say is these benchmarks probably are not going to capture your use cases. That's why uh, these benchmarks can just give you a direction of which model is good. But if you really want to compare the models, my recommendation would be to pick your own use case, pick some of these models and test them uh, on your own data sets. I hope you found this video useful. If you did, consider liking the video and subscribing to the channel if you haven't. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one.